materials for fumble recovery, pursuit, block destruction. Pass, I'm gonna, wait a minute, block destruction, what's that? Well, it turns out the Stanford doesn't teach their defenders to take on blocks. They teach them to destroy blocks. Well, let's go out to Stanford practice and see how they teach it. There are three stages. The first is shock with great violence. Then extend away and up. Then escape and make the play. Now let's go to the Rose Bowl against Wisconsin to see how this works. So let's start in open space because it's easier to see. Shock stops the forward progress of the blocker. Extend lifts the blocker and gives leverage to the defender. That makes it easy to escape and make that play. Now let's go inside and see how it works at the line of scrimmage. When you shock and extend correctly, it takes all the power away from the blocker. It gives control of the blocker's body to the defender. And it has the added benefit of using the blocker's own body as an obstacle to the runner. When you shock and extend correctly, if there's a little bit of lost balance, as in this case in the Wisconsin tight end, what you'll find is the blocker flying through the air with the greatest of ease, and he ends up in the way of his own running back. That allows David Perry, the nose guard, to come around and make that play. And so they don't just see a blocker as a, an obstacle to get to the real goal, the ball carrier. The blocker is a goal for Stanford. They want to destroy that blocker, then get to the next goal, which is the ball carrier. Okay, number